All right, and here we have him, Mr. Wayne Harms. How are you, mate? I'm well, I'm well. Good. I'm, here, I'm here again. I was going to say, you're a three-time Premiership player, but now you're a three-time Jumper Punch legend. How's that feel? Oh, well, I can't separate both of them, so <laughs> no, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, time, we don't but... give you a medal, but the honour's there, the honour's yeah, there. Yeah, my word it is, yeah, but... Uh... All right, first of all, we thank you joining the Jumper Punch family. For This is for episode 37. So I was looking through the list, and you're the only one, really. <laughs> I feel pretty lonely, yeah. I've, um, well, I originally started with 54. You did start with 54. Yeah. One game, yeah? Yeah, one game in 54. Ken Sheldon wore 37 prior to me. Yeah. Uh, Ken was then offered uh, number five by Sid Jackson. Yeah. Who I believe you've you had on the show. We had on the show this week, just... Uh, yeah, no, it's good to see my big face there. Yeah, um, and Sydney. yeah, when when did Ken, he actually he he asked uh, Sheldon? I believe him. he approached Kenny to see if he could take the number. Yeah, obviously, the best. that's all right. We got a phone call. This is live, so I'll cut all this. I have to call you back, pal. Right on. Done that long, well, didn't I? Um, so oh, I, I'm yeah, back. yeah, I believe Ken. Um, yeah, Ken was asked by Sid, obviously because both on ballers, Rovers. Yeah, um, close, yeah. And I was offered 37, I guess. Yeah. I was right at the end of the queue with 54. You were almost out the door. I was almost out the door, <laughs> but I, when I moved to 37, as you're obviously aware, I had Mark McClure one side, who was like it wasn't probably kept in a, a manner that yeah. you would expect it to be I kept. Uh, dirty socks and jocks and shorts and I had early days Mark Kerr on my right hand side yeah who played a lot of reserves for me yeah and uh, finished up with Shane Robinson so and Shane Robinson it wasn't a bad threesome I guess though. No, yeah it was a pretty good yeah a pretty good uh three three players there gee premiership players all all there yeah a lot of premierships there yeah so let's quickly go from the start but I find this interesting you were a Richmond supporter. Yeah, certainly a Richmond supporter. My grandfather coached Richmond, Len Smith. Um, and I was recruited to Carlton out of a zone that was almost Eston and almost North You just Island. missed out by like a uh, street uh, almost. It, it was a street. It was a street either side. It was the old zoning area. And uh, oh, I think I've mentioned before that I played in the Essendon districts. I coached, oh, sorry, I Played for two years in the North Little League. Yep. And eventually found out within the eight houses with between the two streets was residentially Carlton. So I wasn't happy with it. Uh, because no, being a Richmond supporter and the, the rivalry between Richmond like and Carlton. Like in the 60s and 70s was huge. It was massive. It was massive. And my next door neighbours were Carlton supporters and uh, we blew nearly every time they played. And uh, hence How quick does it take for you to fall in love with Carlton? Oh, I don't know whether you actually fall in love with him. I think you go there because you you're asked to go and and, and trial for start. Yeah. Um. And and was lucky enough to, to 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 mix in with a group of guys and play football with a group of yeah. guys who were who were basically household names. Yeah. Um. And I've mentioned before the Jeff Southbys of the world and yeah. Swan Mackays and Rod Ashmans and Barry Armstrongs. Um. And I'm going to miss a few. And Bruce Stool. Bruce Stool, absolute out now champ. You know. And, you know, how lucky was I at that period of time to be able to play with these guys, but not just play with them, strike up friendships that's going to last for the rest of my life. hundred percent, yeah. And you did and you did fall into, like, a good side, but you definitely improved that side too because uh, uh, looking at your highlights, and I'm sure we're going to have a look at it a few soon, but, uh, yeah, you had this style of play. You, you, I'm telling you, for, because you're not... You're not massive in stature. You were you were built like a bull. You mm. know that. You're built like a bull, but you could take the big mark. Like you weren't scared to go up there and and take that mark. Oh no! Look, I, I think I was, you know, told to to have a go at, at all, you know, stages. You Whether it's a tall or a small in front of me, but you know, I guess in our days, growing up, we only really had cricket and and, um, yep. and football. Yep. And you know, I did a lot of athletics. I was, you know, I was ten two or ten three over a hundred and. Yeah. I jumped six three in high jump, um, um, and and love taking risks, and that's what the club allowed us to do. And you know, to be a part of that group, it was interesting because I was a let's call it a bits and pieces type player. So yep. I played the, the you know full back line, half back line, worked through the midfield, went up forward. Yep. 
um, we'll work through the centre. So I guess where anything needed to be patched up, I could never really get settled in one particular yeah. spot. And, you know, some say it's good, some say it's bad, but yeah. it just gives you that little bit of extra oomph to, to go out and, and do something different in a different position. I think so. I think so, because you're pretty much... Any position you played in, you pretty much uh, you pretty much took control of. Oh, and, and every line I went to, I had I had greats on every line. Yeah, you did. So you if did, I'm talking the full back line, I had South. If I went to a half back, I had Dual. Yeah. If I went to a midfield, I had you know Armstrongs and Keos and Johnsons running through the centre. You go to a half forward flank, you've got a great line there. And, yeah, Johnson. And, and full focus. forward lines. We had you know Rod Aspen when he was resting oh. as a rover and a goal kicker, and it was just. It was just a star-studded side, yeah, and, and it was. And and now I'm older, Rocky. That I I, I tend to look back and appreciate how good yep. these guys were when I took them for granted. Yeah, I used to turn up to it. training, and I used to watch them, and and I'd know what they do. But now I'm older, and I look back at these YouTubes. Um, I really appreciate how good they were, and I left out the likes of Alex Marku and, oh, and Jim yeah. Buckley, and Buckley, you yeah. talk to Mosquito Fleet, those guys were just outstanding footballers, they but were. most of all, they were outstanding blokes. No, they were, well, and that's another thing, we've, we've said this before, it's, uh, it's amazing how, you know, like, how well, how good friends you still are, and that, that says a lot, you know what I mean? This is like, because I hear from you, from Marku, and that, oh, I caught up with him, I caught up with him, yeah. This is like 40 years later, you know? Look, it's, I think the reunions are the, the, the major things that come out of it. I'm starting to go back to a few of them now. and You know, you'd like to think that the guys playing today connects their own history and, and you know, rightfully, well, earn the right to have a reunion and, yep. you know, go on with something that they've started this year. Um, continue to work hard. Don't make silly errors. Yep. Uh, come off the ground absolutely exhausted. Yep. Spend time with each other off the ground. And I think, you know, back that's in our days, thing. that's what we did. We, we only trained two, two nights a week. Played Saturday, trained Sunday. Caught up, had a beer. But Saturday nights, we'd go out as a group. Yep. And those that didn't want to come, well, really, you know, we didn't want them there the next week. Yeah. Because if they didn't want to be a part of it after the game, um, it meant that, you know, Maybe individualistic. I don't know. That's a word. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I know. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, no. You're 100 percent right, man. I suppose I, I've said this. Like being that uh, bond outside of the the game is so important inside of the game because oh. man, you're doing that one percent. You know, you're going in for your mate. You're batting in for your mate while you're on the ground because you just had a beer with him. Hmm. You know about his family. You just you know talk to his wife or yeah. And we had we just you know. <laughs> If you didn't have the work ethic off the, on, on the track, you were told to lift your game and, and, and yep. work as hard as the others. So That's yeah. the other thing. And we were talking to Sellers and he was saying, because you had that, you know, now they've got leading teams, you know. Yeah. But you kind of had your own leading teams those days, didn't you? Because on the, on the Sunday, you, you get together, you have a game of soccer, yeah. and then you have a few beers, and yeah. then you'd honestly speak to each other and oh. go, what, what happened? Yeah, look, you know, I think the older guys more on training track, the, the duels and the South be set the set the tone for the training standards. Yeah. Um, and, and very rarely would you see South be make a, a mistake when yeah. he's kicking two particular areas during training, and that was just standards that you yeah. you were told that you needed to do in the lift and, and get up to that standard because you didn't want the ball on the ground half the half the night. You wanted it off the ground, of course, moving as quick as you can and. And if you could do that in the training session, why can't you do it on a Saturday? Hundred percent. And you know, in in seventy nine, um, and I've told, I spoke about this at our seventy nine reunion at the MCG. We we averaged twenty one goals a game, except for the grand final. Now twenty one goals a game, it's one hundred and twenty plus points. That's right. And you can imagine a grand final. We didn't kick one hundred and twenty, but that's understandable due to the fact that the two best sides supposedly are playing in the last yep. game. Um, you know, to kick 85 versus whatever it was, 79 or... Yeah, it was, uh, it was, was five, five points. points, there. Five but, points um, yeah. You know, to win with a lower score, it's good. Yeah. But to set that trend 100%. for the whole season, averaging 100. <coughs> and there's only one other side in the history of the competition that's kicked more points for in a season, and that's the Geelongs of the... I think the early 90s. Oh, really? Where they outscored us by, <coughs> I think it was about 100 points for the season. 
So you we're, we're, you know, we're up there with the with the best. Hundred percent, man. As um, I said, twenty one goals a game. Now, now what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the game back to a high scoring game. It was always there, you know, but. You know, like the game going defensive, it was always going to have happen. You know, they come up with a great idea, six, six, and six, but that was in the, that was in vogue for about a hundred years. That's right. Um, That's how you used to play. You used to play in your line. Well, the funny thing is that you know the umpires will give a warning there for a, a six, six, and six, yeah. but then the umpire changes the bounce to a throw up. Like that, that yeah. I don't understand. Um, and secondly, don't give them a warning, play free. If they can't pick it up now after two years. Exactly. Obviously, we've, they're not real bright. We've said that. We've said that. Sorry. Like after two years, they're still giving out a warning, and then they and then they throw it up. Yeah, that's true. Hey, listen, I've heard this one. Um, Bruce Dool gave you your first kick. Yeah, look, I think I might have got you that. worked it out, didn't no, you? I think I, I might have got that wrong. But All right, was, let's get it straight. It, it may not have been the first game, but it was certainly one of my very very early oh, games. Yeah. Um, my first game was against Melbourne, where I sat on the bench for probably. 98% of the time and yeah. didn't get a touch. Um, I couldn't... Oh, so you had zero touch the first game? Zero touch the first game right. and um, that I didn't remember until someone brought the stat up. Oh, yeah. I thought actually my first game was against Richmond at Waverley yeah. in a night series. Oh, but Waverley. Well, whether that was my first night game and Melbourne might have been my first day game. Or oh, OK, yeah, yeah. I think all that. Yeah, I'm, I'm know, getting old. Mate. No, mate, I know, I know. Well, mate, we, we <coughs> act like we are. We remember everything, but we look at the highlights and it kind of like refreshes our memory. Yeah. Oh, look, you know, I, it's certainly a, 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 something I remember getting involved with Bruce, <coughs> supposedly running, well, supposed to run past him. Yeah. Forgot all about it. He enticed me to run, gave me the ball and... and, uh, and was was kick, but you can't... Like, he kind of told you that this was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, kind of foreseeing what was going yeah. on. I think only a bloke like him could do what he's. Yeah. Uh, hey, tell me something about Bruce. I, I seem to like mention Bruce in every interview, mainly because I suppose you don't hear from the bloke. Did he used to train in full gear? Yeah. So he used to go out like he was going out, mate. That's like. Well, I think we all did. Um, did you? We had the training, training jumpers, blue and red. Blue being the senior squad, red being the, the, the squad, yeah, yeah. We're, we're almost there. Yeah. But certainly always socks up, uh, game shorts, um, Carlton jumper, or if not an AFCO training jumper. So it was... That's interesting. You know, if you're going to be a footballer, look like a footballer. Um, I see guys running around there with hats on. And, yeah. And it's to me, that's you don't play with a hat, so why we want a training? Yeah, no, that's true. I that's, just don't know. Look, it's changing. It's um, no, nah, it's a difference. It's, it's a it's a different game now. A different attitude. Like they they live in a different world. We li- we all live in a different world now. And I struggle to find out why they have to be full time footballers because you can't fill your day in play, or playing or stretching or uh, having ice baths and and try to manufacture something for players to do. And you know if you. If you're spending so much time on the ground, why are the skill levels, at, I believe, probably at times not up to standard? Yep. Um, you know, I, I think the AFL should make the players work. Um, yep. Have a job, let's say, between seven and one. They yep. can go to training between two and six, two and seven. Yeah. Do what they need to do. Then they can go home. They're going to be that tired from being up from seven to seven. Uh, they'll do the right things, have early nights and get up for work the next morning, but that's not for me to say. I just think It won't happen. The world's just moved in a different direction. Well, I think it is, but, you know, if it wasn't the skill level better... Uh, well, if, the, if one, it, the one is, like, the goal kicking still astonishes me. Mm. Like, if, when we look at the highlights, man, like, now they've got this around the corner kick, and I can understand if you're on the boundary, maybe do that, but now they're doing it from, like, 20 metres in front. Yeah. They're doing the ga- the, garlic, the Gaelic yeah. the Gaelic kick, you know? Like, it might be a little... The, the stats say it's a little bit more accurate, but your days, man, you were up on the boundary, man. We're going for it in the... <laughs> but it's to do with the sports scientists, I believe. They... They're only allowed to kick the ball so many times yeah. at night. That's what I'm hearing. So, you know, don't tell me that Lockett, don't tell me that Dunstall, yeah. don't tell me all the good forwards didn't stay back for an hour after training from 7.30 till 8.30 kicking goals. Yeah, 100%. I know what happened at Carlton because I was the defender that used to ping the ball out to them yeah. as they had 40 or 50 shots at goal. Before you finished. I never saw Lockett miss too often. I never saw Dunstall miss no. too often. I never saw... Ablett. You know, the lot, well, Ablett's the likes of Warren Ralphs, the likes of Ross Ditchburn, who were true yeah. full forwards. And 
that stayed out after training and yeah. we kept repeatedly kicking the ball on so they can kick it back over our heads. And I don't understand why. And, and one thing, I just got to get something off my chest. You talk about four forwards marking in front of goals and you watch how often it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, example, McKay, because we're talking about Carl. Yeah. McKay takes a chest mark. McKay, apparently. McKay, McKay, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a mark twenty out. His mate comes this way, and they give each other a little fist pump for taking a chest mark. Yeah. Then they go back and they miss. Yeah. So let's guys, let's celebrate after the goals kicked. Yeah, yeah that's not it. before the goals kicked or the goals missed. Yeah. And it happens with a lot of players with every club. Yeah. They take a mark 15, 20, 30 meters out. They're praising them just little fist mark. pump, and they go back and miss. Yeah. So what's the reason for the fist pump, yeah. fellas? Yeah, See it through first and yeah, and then it. give yourself a cuddle, give yourself a kiss and, yeah. and get on with the next one. It's just, um, yeah, yeah, getting a little bit ahead of themselves at times. I yeah, think. at times it is. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. We want to look at some highlights while we talk. Mm. So let's just, we'll just grab this. We'll just, they'll be, as soon as, <coughs> here we go. Look at this, look at the hair on yeah, there. Yeah, fair bit of hair. There's Kelvin Moore. Yeah, uh, sorry, Kelvin uh, Matthews. Look at the copper Matthews there with it. the long jacket. That was all right. There you go. See that? You were never scared. And the other thing, like, well, I knew this at the time, but look, but get some pace for you. Yeah, what you well, did a lot of athletics as a kid, and I, as I said, I was around about the 10-2, 10-3, Here you go, number 50, 100. what happened there? 54, um, I lost, no, lost my boot there, that's why. Yeah. Look at this, man. Uh, Who was that? Um, is that Sammy? Sam Newman, yeah. He Get off him. Up on the fence. And it is Sammy, look at that. See, that you just weren't scared to take a mark, you know. And uh, I like know. Dennis Collins, um, ex Footscray, came to Carlton. Oh, playing at Princess Park, huh? Oh, look, look at this. Yeah, he got more excited than you. <laughs> <laughs> he used to love it. No, it was a great ground to play, and it was. Um, you, you reckon you'll ever see a game played in that sort of no, mud anymore? I don't, don't think so, no, the ground. <coughs> but that was a real leveller. Um, exactly. It was a real leveller, so... Look at that, you just did the cooter. They talk about cooter picking up the ball one hand. You invented it. Look at this one. Do you remember yeah, this? Was, uh, I, was, I do, actually. That was a... Actually finished up a pretty bad day due to the fact that I'd... I think that was I'm a round on... Pause it here. I might have kneed Jeff Southby in the back of the head and I fractured my kneecap. Yeah. Um, that day? That day. Yeah. And I've missed probably about six or seven weeks. Oh. Jeff's head was all right. But Did you black out? Like, maybe? No. Look, I, I thought the mark was a pretty good mark. It was a good mark, but you landed on your back or did yeah, you? Yeah, like... I, I did. But when I got up, I, I think I'd, I thought if this looks a little bit traumatic, I might get marked again. <laughs> all right. Really? So, you know, it looked like a bit of a wanker there. But I did. That's I've, the best. I've come up and I've gone down, but I think I was playing more for the mark of the because... year. You actually got, and you took your kick, like, yeah, yeah, that would have been yeah, off, yeah, you know? Yeah, look, I was all right. It was just being a bit because of a shade, you, a shade pony. And, you kind of, like, you, you flopped forward there. But, look, I was happy with it. I took it in mid-air it and mark. rolled, and... Um, it was a good mark. But, yeah, it did some damage afterwards by me and Jeff in the back. All right, so there, so you, you got your bit of karma back there for, for faking it, maybe. Yeah, quite possibly, yeah. So that was, uh, anyway, that was a good mark, and... Um, well, at least you're tough there too, man. Like so this would have been the, push him out of the. This line. would have been the preliminary final against Hawthorne. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Is that Ayers? That's Ayers. I kicked, yeah. I think, four in this quarter, which is the third quarter. Yeah, yeah. And I think we won by near on eighty odd points. That was, was a nice a, goal. Just a bit of a day out for us. That's a nice goal. Look at this, and straight back to the centre. Now, yeah, three tackles here. One. Yes, this the one. I, I definitely got this two. Two. Look at this. Wait, where are you going? Where are you going? Another one. <laughs> yeah, and John A gets a bloody free kick for getting the, <laughs> supposedly, <laughs> yeah, anyhow, supposedly a little high. So but that's what, we, that's what we were asked to do, run the footy, and you can run it over two lines now. I yep. think it went down forward, and if memory serves me correct, I think there might have been a, uh, there might have been a goal kick. But, yeah, taking risks. and The other thing was, every time you took a mark, not every time, like you were looking to play on. Yeah, and, and the reason being a backman kicking the ball into the forward line, yeah, that's a rip and kick by oh, Bruce. That's what it is, what it is. Nice. Now, watch it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Go! You're yeah. ready to go. But the thing is, you, by going in quick to your forward line and being an ex or being a defender, 
Yeah. You're just putting so much pressure on the the opposition backs yeah. if you can get the ball in quick. 100%. And, yeah. and I like the way Saad plays. You know, he gets the ball yeah. and he loves to run. But at times, unfortunately, he's got no one to kick to. So and they put him in. I, I believe sometimes they put him in like in a... A weird position, like they give him the ball and he's got nowhere to go, you know. So he's got to do this rush. Oh kick. no, sorry, I was thinking that might have been the one to <coughs> pull on Pete Feather, but he cops oh, it there. He cops a nice. He cops a nice there, mate. I'm telling you, and look at it, ready to go, man. Yeah, <coughs> but it's throwing. And look at this, mate. It's throwing there. You the find fingers. the player, man. Like it's not like you're just booting it. I wonder Robbie Muir didn't belt me. He belted everybody else. Oh, did he? Oh, there he is. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, I like to take those big moments. They're, they're superb, man. I'm telling you, man. Like, you're known for your kicking and your handballing, too, just quietly, man. I'd seen you do some, like, 30 metre handballs. Cracker. Yeah, I, I usually had Phil and, and Dizzy English predominantly had um, had Jimmy. He was, a, he was a player, wasn't he? He was a slippery little boat. Oh, they were. They were two good players, yeah, my yeah. word. But we. It's funny, you know, we, we, Desi and I both really, we think, had the upper hand on them most of the times. What I them. saw, man, you were, you were, like, doing well on them. Look at this, man, pushing them out of the way. This is a good goal. Nice. You're pushing your own players out of the way. There <laughs> Let me go. This is, uh, this is superb, man. Oh. That's what I mean, man. You just weren't scared to go for the ball. You didn't play. Look at this. Yeah. That's nice. And watch this. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Get it, and then let's get let's get out of here, so man. Think, and you would have put the defence under pressure there, you know. I think Rhett Barnes <sighs> finished up marking that, giving it to John Allen. John A. Go. Okay, yeah, so. yeah. I think that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Look at this between the. Oh, nice. That was a night game. Go and smell them. Yeah. Look at this. John A's wrapped with <laughs> What's this? They talk about Dusty giving the... the f Look at that, three of them! Out we go! Bang! This is good. Oh, this is the big sticks. Hey, this next one is the one... You've talked about this one before. Two kicks. Mm. Here we go. Look at this. So that should be Glasgow. It is Glasgow. Look Bradley at this hammer. Bradley. Bradley could run. Look at this one. So we've had one kick. We have two kicks and you can get from one end of Waverley to the other. Yeah. Uh, goaling it. Um, I reckon he ran too far. I reckon he ran too far too. But anyway, we won't take away the good goal. So it can be done if if um, if you want to take the direct line from goal to goal. It's it can be done. It can be done. Yeah. And, and you look at the goal today's goal. <coughs> predominantly, will have a, a, a camera behind the goals. Yeah. And you'll see guys break to the left and right. And there's a ninety percent of the time there's a clear passage down the middle. Yeah. So have a crack. Two he's tried it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, let go with a talk. Let go with a long drop punt. But have someone breaking back into the centre and it can be done. It still can be done now. It does if they want. Wait, oh, you go. I think, I don't know, they kind of break to the, to, the, to the wings. I've always thought if the team can open up the centre and then with a set play go towards the middle because you're always going to be your opponent if you take off first. So why why allow... They're scared to like turn the ball over in the middle. It's 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 a big thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. don't turn yeah. it over in the middle. So if you're getting a 9-metre start, which is a 10-metre square, but they call it a 9-metre square, then you're getting 15-metre laterally on the mark. You're talking about the goal square? I'm talking about the goal Why is that there? It's there for the looks. Why? It doesn't come... No use now. So why would a, why would a designated kicker run out of the square, get a stat, right? It's a stat. Yeah. And then kicks it 15 metres into the fourth pocket. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. You'd run your 10 metres. You'd, you'd then got 15 metres where the guy's on the mark that can only run laterally. Yeah. So then if you can kick the ball 65, yeah. you've got 65 plus you've got 25 start. So you're automatically 90 metres away from, but they want to continue to go into the back pocket. Yeah, they want they to want be safe. To, they want to receive it back. They want to kick again. So they're counting one, two, three stats. And I go back to a guy that I, I, I always seem to pick on, but Caleb Daniel had 27 touches in last year's grand final at half time, but not many of them were effective. Yeah, that's right. So you, you, you're almost giving the <coughs> you're giving the footy because you know there ain't going to be much done with it. Yep. Um, but anyhow, that's just observations, I guess. But yeah, it's a different game to watch. It's a hard game to watch, and um, it's hard to understand. Yeah. And that's the reason why 
Especially I probably don't you, go as much. Especially for you guys, you know, you saw it one way, you know, and now you're seeing the game change. Yeah, it's but Unfortunately, that's the way it is, man. It just, it just, it just, it's just changed a lot. Even me watching it, it just changed a lot. You know, I still enjoy it because I still enjoy the Blues and I still enjoy mm. watching watching footy. But definitely the eighties. I know we always sound like always sound like the old bloke talking here, you know. But seriously, the seventies, eighties, even the nineties, you know, just the, the football was was it was it was magical. It was almost something special, you know. Yeah, it was. But you you, you speak to today's players, and they they find it hard to watch the eighties and seventies yeah. and eighties. And even early nineties because, oh, the game was slower. Um, I think the skill level was as good, if not better, uh, in the old days. Um, but it was free flowing footy. It was hard hitting footy. Not saying today's is not hard hitting, but it's hard hitting in a different way. In a different way, yeah. yeah. But the skill level, you know, if we were trained to today's athletes, we would be more than comparative with them, if not better. Yeah, and it's just all about training, I think. But yeah, certainly skill level, um, I think would stand up and, and be accounted for. Yeah, it'd be interesting way. to have like the '79 team versus yeah. today's team. You know, that'd be interesting to see. Uh, yeah, but it can to, never happen. But yeah, but you'd have to have them train the same way. And yeah, you know, I think. I think no doubt a lot of players would stand up to the last forty. A hundred percent. So hundred percent, you would just adapt to it. Yeah, yeah you yeah. would just. Adapt to it. So you used to. Uh, so you got through uh, the seventies. So I'm. I'm still interested in more about when you got together after the game mm. or on the Sunday. How were those days there? Like, oh, look, they were on and off. They some days you'd you'd stay back for what they call a pleasant Sunday morning. Yeah. Some guys would do their training and have to get home for due to commitments. Yeah. But it wasn't. You know, you hear stories. It wasn't every week the club would get on the drink and no. and have a drink on a Monday, I Tuesday night. I suppose the stories are getting bigger. Again. Yeah, they, they do. Well, I guess as the years go on. But, you know, Carlton Footy Club in those days knew when it was play time and knew when it was work time. Yeah. And no one worked harder than us. Yeah. Guarantee no one worked harder than us. And, and that, you know, by doing that, brings success. But, you know, the longer the years go by, the, or the quicker the years go by, the stories get bigger. Of course. And uh, there, there wasn't a drinking uh, mentality down there. There wasn't a, you know, play up. You know, we, we didn't do it. It, yeah. it was it was isolated stuff. Yeah. Those stories come out. Mm-hmm. And if we were in that party mode, we wouldn't have been as successful yeah. as what we were. No. Nah. So I think, you know, people put a bit of mayonnaise on a few things. and But, you know, certainly professional outfit and... And just absolute ripping blokes. Ah, oh, even just speaking to them now, I'm telling you, man, you could just see how good everyone was. And you know, as I said earlier, appreciating now being able to look back on on YouTube and things, and and I've done it with most of the players I played. I've played with. I, I isolate them and have a look at their their um, highlights, and you think, gee whiz, you know, they they're a lot better than what I give them credit for. Yeah. Because I took them for granted. You did take them um, for granted. Yeah, and the clue was work rate, work rate off the football and yeah. at centre half forward to become a target. And the little guys' ability below their knees and goal yeah. kicking and that sense of where people were to be able to hit targets and, <coughs> and, and you know, <coughs> put the ball out in front of someone so he doesn't yeah. miss stride and he can continue to run. Yeah. Um, skill level was enormous. Um, work rates were always high. Yeah. And, and we all had a fear of losing. Yeah, and that's, that's what drove us to, yeah. you know, probably should have won one in nineteen eighty. Should have gone seventy nine, eighty, eighty one. So 82. that was that was the one. But I mean, you had some changes there. You, you got Jezza, uh, Jezza leaves. Yeah, and you got Percy. The yeah, coach, look, that I, would have been. Uh, I, I think a few guys. But you finished on top of the ladder. Yeah, I think we finished up there. We got or bleep, one and two, whatever. Yeah, we got beat by Collingwood and the. Um, so you didn't have a bad year. You just had oh, like... we had a good year. I think a few players t- tended to lose their way a little bit. Um, kind of, or didn't probably work as hard as what they should have because of, you know, we didn't have that hardness in pushing us. And that was Percy not pushing. Oh, no. I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying no, it was different to Jezza, wasn't it? He very much so. Yeah. yeah. So there was probably more people involved than just. Oh, okay, there yeah. was one out in '79, and yeah. more people involved, and <clears throat> there were probably different messages coming from a lot of different people. Yeah. So instead of having one head person there, you may have had 
three or four, and <coughs> it's a bit hard to take direction from those where you should be taking direction from others. Yeah. But realistically, we had the same, almost the same side. Yeah. Um, and probably cost ourselves a grand final. Yeah. Yeah, no, as I say, man. And we would have gone down with the greatest. We would have gone down with the Melbournes of the 50s. 100%. We would have gone, you know, we put, put in the same echelon as the Collingwoods. The Collingwoods, yeah. We got one, I think, three or four in a row. They won four, yeah, but, but I don't count them because they were like in the 30s when everyone was going to war. So I don't yeah, know. but look, you know, it's... Didn't um, they win one? I don't know. You have to look at your stats. But they won one because they lost the grand final, but they had like a second chance. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But, but anyway, yeah, you definitely would have... You already are, but it would have just topped it off. I think 81, 82, because there was 79, then a gap, 81, 82. 81, 82 probably don't get the recognition I believe they should get. Mm. When, the, when they talk about the Hawthorns and, yeah. and and the Melbournes, and they tend to float over the 81, 82. Yeah. Um, and David Parker makes a great statement in the uh, one of the documentaries they did. He said, you know, it's probably the best group of small players ever to play in yep. the same team at the same time. Yep. And with the sprinkling of the, well, we call them talls in those days, but compared to today's footballers, no, so. you know, Fitz is only a 6'3". That's right. Where Giants was 6'7", but, you know, wasn't... Like, we've got Cribs now. He's he's bigger than that. Yeah. And yeah. he's not a ruckman, you know, so... And, and in the old days, you talk about Big Nick, but Big Nick was Big Nick because of yeah, his he legs. Was he, wasn't, he wasn't a 6'2 no. or 6'3", or even. Um, That's right. But, you know, times it's, have changed, athleticism's changed. Yeah. But, you know, the the mixture that we had of the old and the young yeah. brought everybody up to a different standard. Yeah. yeah. Because I think the older guys saw, okay, there's new young talent coming in. Yeah. We were absolutely in awe of the Southbys, the Mackays, the Duels, the Ashmans, the Keos, the Armstrongs and others, the Austins. And we wanted to put on a bit of a show for them, and we had to live up to a standard. Yeah. So that brought all the younger guys up. <coughs> a great sprinkling of young guys, but then we had the the wisdom and the the ability of these old guys that just knew the game inside out, and you would absolutely sponge off them yep. to get as much information as you could. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and from a learning process. You learn from those guys and it just sticks in your mind. 100%. Like the and then the I suppose you got a couple of players in that 81. You got the buzz come come over. Yeah. Kenny Hunter could yeah. be one of the best skinny men I've seen play the yeah, game. Yeah, phenomenal courage too. Was, uh, Who else was there? There was one more. Was it McConville? Who else came over? No, Macca was there. He'd been there. Um, Someone else come over. Anyway. Ross Ditchburn yeah. has full forward but didn't last long in the yeah. game. Got knocked out. Um but then you had like... We had Glass got cup step up in that particular year on a wing. Because um, he was there 70... No, he wasn't. He was there 81, 82, 87. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's right. He stepped up, yeah. Yeah, so we had a few step up. And, and look, it was... You know, we still had that core of the old and the, and the young. Yeah. And, you know, the guys coming in for their first finals in 81, 82. Yeah. Well, they, they missed out on the one two years prior. Yeah. So they want to be a part of it. Yeah, they were. We got a little bit greedy. We wanted... We, we had one, we wanted two... Never ever thought we were going to get yeah. three. Yeah, that's right. But everybody that came in and had that hunger to, to work hard, to sponge off information of the older guys and even the younger guys who were, you know, it's 81, 82, I was only 21 and 22, but we were we were seasoned. Oh, yeah. Because I, I'd started as a 17 year old, so that's 17, right. 18, 19, that's the 20, other thing. 21, 22, I've got six years under my belt. That's Most right. of the youngsters had six years under their belt, that's the Sheldons, right. the Buckleys, and the Connells. Peter Francis when he was there for seventy nine. So we had uh, we had the group of young guys that was six yep. years into it but still only twenty two, twenty three. That's right. That's so right. Season, season, but then we had the real <coughs> season. Yeah, the real season. The real season still there, the South Piece of Duels and the Mackays and yeah. So it was a great sprinkling and You were saying too in one of the things, you were saying like in seventy nine you never realised because you were eighteen in seventy nine. So I was not a nineteen. Yeah. And Jezza was like 36. Yeah, 35 or 36. Yeah, I didn't that's appreciate like, how old That's like a different... Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's a completely different... And I only, I only found that out recently when I found out that Jezza was, you know, turned 76 yeah. or something. And I'm yeah. thinking, well, hang on, 76. I might have been 77. And I'm thinking, I'm 62 and I'm doing my sons thinking, okay. You never about... even thought about it at 79, yeah. did you? No, no. Yeah, I just appreciated them as the footballers they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
didn't know their ages. Yeah. I knew the young blokes' ages because we knocked around with them. Yeah, that's right. And, and, when, and when the young guys went there, it was kind of, you know, the oldies and the youngies, but yeah. then the success come and we, we, we got a lot closer and a lot closer, but didn't realise how old they were. And, yeah. you know, Dooley, I think, is 69 now. Yep. Um, so he was seven years older. I saw a quick interview with him. He did one with uh, David Reese jones for, yeah. for his thing. The first time I heard him speak for, like, 90 seconds, but he looks the same. He's got the same beard. I'm telling you, yeah, put that does. headband on him. I reckon yeah. he could, yeah. he could like just jump straight in. You know, yeah, look, he's um, he's starting to do a few things at the moment. We, yeah. we are doing a function on you the are 15th doing the of function, next yeah. month, and uh, to hear that's him. for the Norm Smith medal. That's for the Norm Smith medal. So yeah, for, I think that's sold out, which is good. And I think it's probably sold out just because Bruce is going to be 100%. there. But I think we're going to protect him a little bit. He doesn't want to say much, and nah, I think if myself and David Reese Jones and Greg Williams are there. We can nah, we, can, we can hold court while the old fellow just, can, just, can, just relaxes and does it easy. I reckon you so, can definitely, mate. Like, but he, you know, you, you're talking about footballers. Is there's none greater? Um, they keep saying that. Like and, I used to watch him in awe and just think, well. Gee, was how lucky was I? Well, as I said, like those days there, he could get four possessions and be best on ground. Yeah, yeah. He'd be best on ground. He just, you know, to, to not even to appreciate that he played four years in the reserves before he got his first senior game to go on and play. So he played for, four years in the reserves, did he really? I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, as wearing number four, I believe. But then yeah, went on to right. play 365 or 300. So he played like over 400 games. Oh, year. look, just, yeah, and, and born and bred in Broadmeadow. Well, actually Geelong, yeah. followed Geelong, but I think his father, they tell me, came to work in with Rod Austin's father at Ford. Yeah. And they lived in Broadmeadow, so... Oh. Um, or Jakarta. Oh, Jakarta, so yeah. So they say he was recruited from Jakarta, but I guess born and bred in Geelong. Okay. So I think his dad and Curly's dad... So the story goes, and someone can clarify it. Yeah, both worked at Ford together. Yeah. And then got transferred down to Melbourne to work at Ford, I think it may have been. And that's why he got re- And that's where he got recruited from. So, yeah, you know, lucky you know, he could have, he could have finished up playing at Geelong. Yeah, yeah, he could have, that's right. And how would we have been having to play against him? No. Nah, uh, I've only seen one guy take him apart, you know. It was in a, it was in a practice match at Optus Oval. Yeah. It was an inter-club practice match, and it was Wayne Johnson. I played on him one night, um, 120 minutes, which we regularly used to do. So play on a Saturday, Tuesday night. That was uh, for like full, oh, full, full match. Of... And what they do, they'd usually pin the reserves, knocking on the door versus the seat, and it got nasty. It was oh, hard yeah. to play well, yeah. against the Collingwood. Yeah, you trying to get into the side. Well, they'd, they'd knock you out to get into yeah. the side. Yeah. But I got <laughs> pegged against Dooley one night, and I, <laughs> I never got a kick. I, I picked up the ball as the final siren went, but then I, I watched Jono playing in the following week and Jono just took the game apart. And I said, what did you do different? He said, I ran, I ran him, I ran him, I ran yeah. him. And that was later on in his career. Yeah. You know, do it in the early career to, you know, yeah. the last year, Look, you wouldn't get away with it. But, yeah. A uh, couple of players got him near the end, I mean, in a game or two. I mean, I, in, in his last game in 86 in the grand final, I think Dunstall probably had the best of him. Oh, look like... But it was his last game. I, you, know, you know... The whole side. It's time. very rare... Did you just, played in the 86, did you? Uh, losing. The losing? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people highlight it because it never... Re- what never really That's happened. right. That's right, because it was a rare thing. Yeah, he probably would have won 99.9% of his contest, but it's that point one of the percent that yeah, people say... Happened. Hey, he's almost human. Yeah. Well, he's not. Yeah, he's, he's not, not, he's not, not human. He's, he's, not. he's um, not. He was just born to play football. Beautiful physique. I heard Had that, that loping run and just uh, the ability to spoil from that. Yeah. was. I heard that. I think John owned that was saying that um, even when you used to play your soccer games, oh, he'd want to be a bit on ground on that one too. Yeah, it was painful. <laughs> he, he was just so serious, and you know. You'd have the ball, you'd be dribbling on the ball, and you think, I'm going to have a shot to go, and all of a sudden he kicks the ball. It was just, and so, Bruce, it's Sunday morning for Christ's yeah, sake. Like, get serious. Yeah, that have is some it. fun. Stop That's being it. a party pooper. But any, anything, you know, phenomenal basketball, I believe. A golfer, he hit the ball well apart from a 
Maxim Slice, which... Uh, I usually, if you're good at... I've always said, if, you, if you're really good at one sport, usually good at a few sports because you're hand I Like, you're a good golfer, aren't you? Oh, I was handy. Younger, but not now. I'm, I struggle to swing a club. But Bruce, everything he did, he... Um, yeah, he did it well, and he just, you know, just flew it at everything he did. Yeah. Um, Look, I'll probably... Never going to get to talk to Bruce, but I suppose this is as good as a Bruce interview. Oh, look, it's funny, you know, when he, when you do sit down and talk to him, knowing him, he, he very clever, very witty, very dry. He is. When he speaks, he, he speaks well, man. And, and like, you know, when he does speak, you listen. Yeah, hundred percent. Because he doesn't say too much. He doesn't say too much, and when he says something, you you know that, you know, it's coming from the heart, and it's yeah. a, it's a pretty intelligent 100%. comment that's going to be made. And hundred percent. Um, phenom- phenomenal. Football, gee, right. you know anyone that says they've seen many better than him, I'd, I'd, I'd argue. Yeah, it. nah, hundred percent. All right, so listen, we we just quickly, we'll, we're gonna, I want to finish off on this. Um, today, the game. Now we're coming up to Collingwood. We're eight and two, mm-hmm. right? What do you reckon about the team? How are we going? Oh, look, they're going, they're going well. They can only boot who they're playing. So, yeah, you know they've had the ability to be able to, you know, get in the front by four or five goals, yeah. and then then tend to sit back and maybe, you know, think, okay, the job's done. Yeah. But other sides are going to claw back. Yeah. You know, if they, they're, they're holding them out at least. Yeah, look, they've just got to lift their work rate and, and, and you know, if you get a lead, work on a lead, build on a lead. Yeah. Um, I think they're building. They're building. Like this, remember, this is the first year that they've really kind of been in this sort of position for like 20 years. I think they're playing a lot more freedom. Yeah. Um, not so many of the rules and regulations need to be followed. It's it's a game where you've got to outscore your opposition. Pretty much. And you've got to do it well, the yeah, quickest it possible way you can. Yeah. And if they can learn to build a lead, and I'll, I'll go back to our days when, you know, we could kick seven, eight in a row and we put the game to bed. Yeah. But we wouldn't allow the opposition to get back. You know, if we were seven in front, we'd like to win by that seven because yes. all the hard work's done. That's right. Capitalise on it and, and see yourself through for a good win. And at least just at least keep and then even it out for the rest of the game yeah, you know, at worst. You can imagine being in a street fight and you've got the bloke on the ground, you're punching the absolute daylights out of him. Like he's just about on his last breath. I'll guarantee if you put your hand out, out and help him up, he's gonna turn around yeah. and belt the daylights out of you. Yeah, that's what a footy so when you've got the opportunity of finishing someone off, yeah. finish him off, but do it in a in a manner where you say, well, okay, this is what we're capable of doing, and this is this is how we're prepared to play. Yeah. Um, just by being direct, getting the ball out the middle, kick the bloody thing long. Yeah. Because your defenders that you're kicking to, you yeah. kick it to your forwards, but their defenders are going to be going cross. Oh, yeah. How do I get him? How do I find him now? Well, I'm looking up here, and yeah. the forward knows what's going on. He's 100%. always going to be a step ahead of the defender. Hundred percent. So reckless football can be That's so advantageous. Yeah. It's going to play in your hands. Especially, we've got a, we've got a couple of good forwards now. There, oh, know, my word. In Mackay and um, and uh, Kerno, they could be the best duo at Carlton for the last 15 years or whatever, maybe. I can't even remember since. And it could be compl- uh, complemented by um, Owies and yeah. Um, Durden. Yeah. Little blokes that want to Durden. get front and square. Maybe Motlott's had a couple of games. He looks like he's a fair player. As long as you can get Smalls to work hard to keep the yeah. footy in, um, you're going to score more than the yeah. opposition. They've called them, you know what, the, the media, they shimmy. They've called them the Mosquito Feet, so I've, I keep... I keep saying, don't do that. No. Don't disrespect the mosquito plate. So I've called them in Italian the chinga gender, which is like the little fear, you know, like that they, they're, they're buzzing around, you know. I don't like to disrespect the, the oh, mosquito no, you know, plate. They, they've just got to do it week in, week out. They've got to, they've got to say, okay, our defensive forward works got yeah. to be harder than what we do, you know, attacking. 100%. Forward. And um, they do. And what I've noticed too with them is, I think Voss has done a great job is, the way they set up around the contest now, like they're at the front, they're at the back, mm. they're not all in one spot. So they're kind of like setting themselves up for success, you know, and the big men are bringing yeah. it down. So it's kind of, it's working. And the difference is you've got a leader there now that's been there and done that. He's yeah. played in three. Yeah. He's been individually successful. He's been collectively successful. Very successful, yeah. Um, <laughs> he, knows, he knows the recipe and the recipe is not too complicated. No. You don't have to put 10 ingredients in there. If you put three ingredients in there, it can taste just as good yeah. as having ten. Yeah. And if you keep it simple, yeah. keep it simple and, and 
don't flood their heads with too many yeah. uh, things to tell them about. Yeah. So these are the ingredients we need to, 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 yeah. to get the recipe They're right. footballers, at the end of the day, like... They're not road scholars. Well, yeah. we had one. Yeah, you did have one. You did have but one. But yeah. actually, we turned that road scholar to think more like us. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it was funny. We you know, think you have all these ideas about, you know, hitting at 6 o'clock and 3 o'clock and 2 o'clock and... I think it was two of them, Jimmy Buckley and Rose, uh, Wayne Johnson turned around and said, Fitzy, for Christ's sake, just bring it to deck and we'll get it. Yeah, that's it. Simple. And that's, that's the recipe that made it yeah. so simple. Bring it our way, we'll make you look good. 100%. And they did it. Yeah, Where James did it, Fitzy did it. Yeah. Any Ruckman that we had, yeah. and the recipe was, don't complicate it, get it down to the advantage of your on ballers. And they'll make you look good. Yeah. And ninety percent of the time it did. Yeah, hundred percent. And and what they're doing now, the ruckman now at Carlton Chase Footy, they're bringing it down to the likes of the Crips, and they're taking some risks by winning the footy. Yeah. Walsh, phenomenal young footballer. Phenomenal. Just keeping it simple. Yeah. Getting the ball and 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 helter skelter kick looking yeah. long, and let's it forwards. Especially. Especially now with uh, because they got six 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 at the start, then they can change, you know. But the six six six, if you can get that ball, like you said, if you can get win that ball and then kick it to the four line straight away, it's a one on one contest. And I'm telling you, Mackay and Kerno will beat them 80 percent of the time. There's not too many sides out there that have got the ability to back. Oh, sorry, to nullify a count of forward six. Yep. If they're prepared to work hard and yep. take front positive. Yeah. You get the ball in there you're then employing them to, to finish off and do a job. Yeah. So you do your job and get it to them. Your job's completed. Yeah. Now they're paid to do what they do best. 100%. And that is to be attacking, but yeah. also be defensive in their, in their role to keep it. 100%. Ready. So if you don't get it, you bring it down. If you can't get on the ground, then you keep it in there and let's start again. You know, right? Again, you go back to the old days, and I guess we talk about them a lot. And you've had a lot of old-time players. Well, that's, on, but, that's all we do. But yeah. the, jo the job of a defender in our days was to get the ball to your forward. Yep. And if the ball came out too quick or too easy, to me that was a total lack of disrespect for the defender. Yeah. So I've, I've done my job, my teammates, my de other defenders have done their job. Yep. <clears throat> We've got it into our forwards who were employed to kick goals. Yeah. Nine times out of ten they did, but the ones that came out easy, I thought that was disrespecting yeah. the work of the defenders. 100%, yeah, and, it makes sense. And, and, and they would hear about it. Yeah. They would hear about it. You know, why should we be working hard to get it to you when you don't work hard enough to, not just a goal, but to keep yeah. it in yeah. and give yourselves a second opportunity? Yeah. And that's what we were good at. Yeah. Uh, communicating, making sure that what you did was going to be advantageous to your forwards. And uh, it's easy to think about it now. We probably didn't think that way when we were playing because we took it for granted, as I said earlier. But now it, it all seems to make sense. Yeah. It all seems to make sense. That it does. We it did does. these things for a reason, and at the end of the day, three premierships under your belt. You can't the, argue the, the with recipe that. was okay. Hundred percent. That was simple. Yeah. Because we weren't all that smart. Yeah. Uh, we weren't all that. Fitzy was. Yeah, Fitzy was. A couple yeah. others were. Yeah. But we're still the football game. No, I get, hey, listen. Everything's going. I'm telling you, everything's coming back to the '80s, man. The fashion is. Everything's coming back to the '80s. Mm -hmm. You know, like even the music and the, and the movies. They can't think of a. They can't think of a new idea. Music all sounds the same, you know. I'm telling you, like they had it, they had the formula. We were kicking twenty goals a game, yeah, yeah, yeah. and now it's gone back. But look, at the end of the day, I think I think the team. I've, I'm pretty excited. The first time I really seen them, they maybe I don't know if it's this year or next year, but at least they got this formula and they put the right players around there. Like we got Weeder in, look. I'm he's nowhere near Bruce too, he, but he's got that kind of Bruce to attribute. I know? gave that some thought last week with some of the way uh, the way that he defended. Yeah. I, I likened it to Bruce. Yeah, because he doesn't care where he punches it, but don't bring him undone with your smalls. Yeah, knowing that he's going to do it, don't let him down. Yeah, you know, and so Bruce had the ability to be able to punch the ball to the advantage of either himself or his teammate. Yeah. You don't spoil the ball for the sake of spoiling it. You spoil it for the advantage of your... So I could it's see what Reitering is yeah. doing, and, and, and eight times out of ten, there's Carlton players out of fighting hard enough. Yeah. If he continues to do that, it's just another chance of stopping the oppositional goal. Yeah, 100%. No, no, he's a, he's a great defender, man, I'm telling you. He, well, oh, no, sorry, he's not a great defender. At the moment, he's a good defender, and he's definitely... 
you know, working towards being one. And he's definitely the general back there. Yeah, you know, I think the other exciting thing too, and I saw it last week, just three clutch marks by uh, De Conning. De Conning. Um, yeah, TDK, man. Just in perfect How timing good they? when they needed to be done. Yeah. And taking risks and, and obviously having the approval of the coach to, to jump when you have to. Yeah. Whether it's going to be a mark or a spoil. That's huge, yeah. Um, and the confidence the young kid's going to get from doing it. Kind of there's good. nothing better than taking a big mark and a yeah. tackle jumping on someone's head. Yeah, 100%. Um, how good, well, you, you know, because you took it over, how good is it? Look, like, you feel good, you, yeah. you stand a little bit taller, yeah. you know you're going to do it next time or at least have a crack yeah. and you drop it, you drop it if you mark it. Yeah. When you get your first one, yeah, and that's you, what you happened. usually catch the second, third and fourth one. Yeah, no, that's what um, the common. And he, and he kicks a goal because uh, he kicked that crunch goal, so he kicked that. No, it's like, exciting, it's exciting right at the moment. Yeah. As long as they don't get too far ahead of themselves. Yeah. Take every contest, I know it sounds cliche, Every contest as it should be approached. Yep. And they're going to give themselves every opportunity. No, I, look, to be know. honest, I really <laughs> haven't been excited over the last three or four years because I really didn't see much happening no. with the side. No. It's actually exciting to watch them play footy now. That's good. I haven't watched all the games. I'm catching up on a few. But there is that... There's something Recipe, there. It's happening, yeah. It's coming together. Yeah. It's coming together. Yeah. And listen, learn. You're going to be learning from a, a bloke who's had, as I said yeah. earlier, I the success he's had. Yeah. And it's not much different to what we did to get make ourselves successful. Yeah. It's what they did to make them successful. Yeah. And keeping in mind, Brisbane in those days were coached by a bloke who played in four or five. Yeah. So the recipes... Don't differ much. Yeah. It's just a matter of sitting back, listening, learning, yeah. implementing, and who knows? I saw a um, this is there was a thing on on, on Fox Talent. It's about the American gridiron, and there was a coach called Bill Belichick, and he coached mm-hmm. the Cleveland Browns. I think it was, and he took them over, and they used to meet in this. In it was only on yesterday morning. The, the, the used to meet in this meeting room. Yeah, and they had the you know big screen up, and it had all the theatre type seating and I think they'd won 10 Super Bowls and around the walls there were all these photos of Super Bowl 1991 and the other 9 or 10 or 10 yeah. total that were won and the players walked in one morning and there was a photo on the wall that just had champions no photos no names it was just a, a, a frame and he said well have a look at all these others here's an opportunity now for you to which your name and your photo in something that hasn't been done. Yeah. Bug them, you did. They went out and won one. There you go. And it was just putting something in front of them to say, here's your opportunity to write your well, own the history. Carrot, you know, there's the carrot to write your own history. Yeah. And it's your name into something that could result in 10 years' time meeting together, yeah. knowing that you've achieved the ultimate in your chosen sport. They did it. Yeah, didn't just do it. I think they did it the next year and missed yeah. out. Then might have won two or three within an X amount of years. But just that carrot, maybe, maybe something Glossy needs to do. No, no, I, I, yeah, no, 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 that's right. I, I, I think he's got it. I, I think he's he's doing some good stuff there. No, and you're right about that carrot, and you're also right about you know the, the one quick thing too is their their confidence too. I can see their confidence building, and like you played in those premierships, I'm sure the confidence. You know, like uh, being winners, and that would have uh, would have helped you in oh, a lot of games. Yeah, knowing yeah. that, ah, oh, mate, because we were at times an arrogant chances. bunch. We we knew that. We but you were, have to be a little bit, yeah, don't you? Yeah, but we knew that our talent, combined talent, could beat anyone. Yep. And the more that we were tested by being behind, the more we looked at each other and thought, yep. "Well, hang on, they can't beat us." Yeah. And we were arrogant to an extent where we were never going to lose 79 grand final. And I've said that, that before, yeah. I, we, because of what Jezalingo did yeah. us, which was criminal. Yeah. But he scared us. We were match hard. We, we were never going to get beaten. Five points ain't a lot. Yeah. But it was still enough. At one point would have been enough. Yeah. But he scared us into winning a game. Yeah. Then we got, yeah, win 81, 82. The talent we had in that side, all we had to do was click. Yeah. You know, it was only, oh, I don't know, 18, 
eight points and 20 points in over yeah. the two years. It wasn't a great deal, but it was still enough to... Yeah. You know, it's, we were never going to beat Richmond in, in 82. No. They were, they were odds on favourites. Yeah. And, they smash you in the, in the oh, first one. Oh, whopping out at Waverley one day in yeah. one of the uh, qualifying finals, and it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It was... Yeah. Um, but you won that in the... Really, in the first... Five minutes in it, just uh, twenty points. First five minutes of footy that went for about nine minutes yeah. with the wrestles and the pushing. And yeah, the that's shooting. right. There was a lot of fighting. Yeah. We knew that we, if we got <laughs> off to a start and, and created a lead, we could match them for the rest of the day. And that's what exactly what happened. We got off to an eighteen point start, and won by eighteen yeah. points on twenty points. Yeah. Um, but still arrogant you know, to an extent. Well, I was that we still had the personnel there to, and, and and the coaching on that day. You know, they made a few rotations and. You know, push yep. me back to Bartlett. Push they did the push you back to Bartlett. Push the big one. McConville down to forward. McConville down forward. He kicked the one kicked, or two, yeah. goals. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and I talked earlier about being that bits and pieces type person. And I think prior to in those lead-up games, you know, I played on a wing. I played half-back. I went to half-forward and yep. just run in the pocket and midfield. And But being pushed back onto Bartlett that day was just like sending me home. Yep. It was just like sending me home. Like Desi... I duly, yeah. like these guys down there that yeah. I was so comfortable with, yeah. thinking, okay, this is this is good, yeah. this is good. I, instead of thinking about being the bits and pieces person, I knew I was sent back. Now you had a, I, I had a focus to do, and I knew that I had four or five guys there that would, you know, just. We're going to back I, you up. I, they were yeah, right there, yeah, mate. Yeah, you had that real, team, yeah, because he was, you know, he, he was on Kevin early and. And, you know, you just had to realise he was never going to go on his left side. He was never going to handball. He's always going to give you a chance. Yeah, but yeah. don't let him off the hook because he kicked three or four. And that's right. Uh, and we didn't want three or four because no, no. even though we, we knew we could match him, yeah. we didn't want this little prawn to get off the... Yeah, so, you know, yeah, the versatility of our side was probably the greatest... It was, yeah. It was the greatest thing we could have. Yeah. Knowing that we could throw Hunter forward and back, McConnell and that's forward right. and back. I can go up and back. We had other players who could... Play in multiple positions yeah. when needed, and, and it only you know proved later on in when Reese only found out prior to the grand final he was going to play on Dunstall. Yes. He never played centre half back in his life, but yeah. in the win. Yeah, but went back with a focus. Oh, uh, what's this in the '87? This is the '87. Uh, no, no, he Brereton. Pl- yeah, what did I say? Dunstall. Oh, Dunstall. Yeah, Brereton, yeah, Brereton, yeah. Last Brereton, minute yeah, went on Brereton, yeah, and that's it. And uh, yeah, but went back, on went, went back with a focus. Yeah. And, and the beauty of playing in defence, he, he knew all he had to do was spawn and run straight, yeah. and he was pretty good at that. He did. Um, he did very good at that. Had the athleticism, and and uh, hence won a Norm Smith. Yeah. One hundred percent the Norm Smith. Now a great player. All right, that's been great. I've got to go and do something. No, nah, you've got to go and do some work. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you jumping on. No, that's good. Uh, third time, last time. No, nah, no, nah, nah, it's not going to be last time. We're going to get you back for nah, something else. No, nah, no. We've seen enough of me, so... Um, no, nah, no, nah, we love hearing the, the, the old stories and the insight into the side. Yeah, so. they get better each year. You get older, they, uh, you know. You, Why not? Well, I, you know, it's funny. I, I sit back and Why watch not? YouTube now, and the kids, I've, I've said this, they reckon I'm a wanker. Why do you want to sit back and watch it, Dad? And I just want to appreciate, yeah, 100%. not just myself, but looking yeah. at these guys I played with. 100%. You know, shit. Do you know what kids say you're a wanker for yeah, watching yourself? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you think of it, these the guys you play with don't come out all that often. Well, we love watching it. Like, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you want to watch these duels and that playing? Like, it, yeah. it, was, it, was, uh, it was something magical when they played, yeah, so... So that's it. No, no, we love you. We appreciate you being on. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure. Absolute pleasure. And go Blues. Yeah. See what happens. Thanks, mate. No, no, no.